Pepes. I feel really quite excited. I don't want to feel it. Don't feel it then. So we'll pack this bit down. Oh, it's the village hall. <laughs> Mum's going to cry. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Let it be my house, <laughs> please God. <laughs> Hello. Okay, so I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. I don't know, I've got this as a prop. It says, in case I haven't told you today, I'm vegan. So I tried to paint a woodland mural for the first time. This is my first time, so please don't, don't judge me like I'm a pro. I'm sat looking at it finished now, and I'm pretty happy with it. Oh, something fell over. We're still sorting our house out, so it's not actually finished yet. So things are gonna, be, if you hear something falling over, it's probably like a rug or something, but I don't know. This is my first time painting a mural. I wanted to do a woodland animal theme because I've always wanted a mural in my room ever since I watched Rachel Maxey's mural video. She's made another one since then. I'll... This one. She's the person I got the inspiration from to make this video. But... Yeah. Take it easy on me. It's very... This has been a long time in the making. I started this video in April. And we're in August, so cheers to that. But yeah, I hope you enjoy it and yeah, enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Hello. About to move into a new house and I'm currently in my like soon to be room. On my bedroom wall, I'm going to paint a mural. It's gonna be like naturey themed, there's gonna be some mountains, some trees, all sorts of stuff. But I haven't done a video in a while and I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna have a go myself. That's what we're doing. I've already bought the paint. Let me go get it so I can show you the paint I've bought. I felt like I should've done two trips, but yeah. These are my paints. I do have kind of an inspiration for this. I saw this person who did a TikTok and she had like mountains and stuff and she clearly does, I think she does murals for a living. It was very good, but it was all, every layer was just a block color. She hasn't really done it as painterly. So I think I'm gonna follow more her style of like each layer being a block color. Yeah, I've already got a plan. I've already painted the wall the base color. So we're just gonna draw it out and just go for it. I need to really think about my layers because I feel like this could get quite complex if I'm not super planned out, but I'm gonna try my best. This is my first time doing one, but I've always wanted to do one and I'm really excited about it. My design for the mural spans across two walls in my bedroom. One which will be at the back of my bed and the other, twice as big, which will dominate most of the room and features a large window. I first began by sketching out a rough design of what I wanted my mural to look like. I then took the design to SketchUp to create a more final digital plan. The smaller wall will feature a mountainscape with three layers of mountains, all of which will be different colours. A moon will sit behind the peak of the tallest mountain and I'm also considering including a wolf which will be sat at the top, howling at the moon. As we pan around to the left corner of the larger wall, we'll be changing scenery slightly to a woodland scene, where a deer can be seen drinking from a lake within the opening of the trees. 
Though the deer is technically the smallest component of this corner, I want it to be the main focus, so I'm going to challenge myself to make it as detailed and as striking as possible. Moving on to the centre of the wall, I'm going to try to work around the window as best I can by including flourishing trees in the top area of the space with their trunks coming to root in the space below. They will be surrounded by greenery and several other animals, one of which will be a rabbit. The right hand corner of the wall will feature another tree, this time with a branch protruding out to the left where a bird will be perched. In the gap below the branch, I'm planning on painting several butterflies flying upward to fill the space. I'm hoping that the final version of my mural will look a little something like this. I've decided to use quite an earthy colour palette with several hints of artificial tones threaded throughout. Overall, I'm feeling very happy with my plan, so it's time to start painting. After drawing out my design on the wall with a pencil and some chalk, Need a ladder. I began painting. I started on the smaller wall with my mountain design first and began just blocking out my chosen colours. I wanted to get a general picture of the whole mural with my colours blocked in first before moving on and finalising all the edges. Okay, so I'm very torn. I bought this colour, big patch here, with the intention of having it as the closest layer in perspective to the viewer. Oh, I hope you can see me. I don't think you can. But just, I'll make big movements. Here and here was going to be the trees that you're looking through to this scene here with the deer. I'm now slightly worried that actually this colour here, which I just happened to pick up as like a test pot that no one wanted and they were selling it for 50p, which is like £3 off the price. So I was like, you know what, I'll take that because that could come in handy. Now I'm concerned that I might like this colour more than this one. I don't know whether to just let it sit and dry because they haven't fully dried yet and I feel like they could change a lot or whether to change my whole idea. But this colour is a lot more, this colour is a lot more striking whereas this colour is a lot more, would fit the traditional colour scheme of the the tree. Hmm. Something to think about. I've done the three layers of my mountains. I'm not sure how far you can see down but I haven't gone all the way down to the very bottom of the wall because I'm not sure if I'm going to add trees on similar to the design that the lady did in the TikTok but I've got my three layers and I haven't gone into like the detailed areas because I'm going to do a second layer on every layer and also I need to shape out the moon because that's not the shape that the moon will be anyway let's get on with doing this wee section over here For the rest of the day, I continued to paint and blocked out a bit more of the mural before leaving it. And obviously had a little bit of a boogie. So I've drawn the top of the tree like here. And now I'm going to outline it with this nice deep water blue so I know where I'm going to do the details. I'm just mapping it all out really right now. To be honest, I haven't started on any of the details, but I think by tomorrow I'll start on all of the... You can't even see me. I'll start on all the, the details. Saying that I continued with it the next day would be a big lie because about a week went by before I started to tackle finessing all of the edges. Anyway, the next day, or more truthfully, a week later, I started by doing a second coat on each of my block layers before moving on to the details. 
I began on the mountain wall, as I'm calling it, as I wanted to follow the same painting process as I did when I was blocking out my layers. Okay, so I just did like the basic outline with a brush of this layer of the mountain. And now I'm gonna go in with a roller and do the bigger part of it. And then when that's dry down here, I'm then gonna do this layer and then I'm gonna do this layer. I don't think you can see on camera, but it, I need to paint it all the way down to the floor because I haven't done that yet. I've missed out a few details like up here, but I'm gonna wait until I do like the outline of the moon and bring that right down to like the edge and then I'll do the small details. I didn't film much of this process of painting the edges of the mountains, but I found it extremely relaxing. There was something so enjoyable and satisfying about making these edges so clean cut. So after completing the mountains, I was really excited to move on to block out the details of the rest of the mural. When moving on to the bigger wall, I began by firstly smoothing out the edges of the trees that framed the opening of the forest. trees is done or it's done for now i'm not going to work on the trees anymore now i'm going to move on to the greenery the bushes the moss this is how it is right now why did i just talk in american accent i, I apologize i don't know where that came from but yeah so i'm gonna what i think i'm actually gonna do is i'm just gonna leave the bottom bit for now and i'll just i'll work on just doing the outline for the top section and then we can go from there i didn't really know what i was going for i thought i was going for vines but i've looked it up and it's like moss Moss. Okay, first of all, I'm going to sketch. No pressure. This is the beginning. It's fine. We can change it if it goes wrong. Okay, so I've done a basic outline. I don't really think you can see it on the camera, but it's I've kind of brought it down slightly from where it's the first layer has been painted. I'm gonna, it's going to be about here is the top, so quite a considerable difference. I'm actually just going to go in and do it. I'm going to take a really thin brush and do the outline, probably a centimetre off what I've sketched, so it gives me some room to like experiment, but let's do it. I'm just trying to do the general outline, sort of, well, just off the general outline before I go in and start painting in all of these sections. It always involves like stepping back and then back and forth, back and forth from a painting because I have a real problem when I like studied in uni and I was doing like life drawing, I'd always have to, they always teach you you should always step back like every minute from your picture anywhere you're painting because it, it looks, you can get so into your painting and then you step back and you realize that something is completely off. So I'm doing a lot of that and then when I'm happy, I'll go in and I'll start painting in all of these sections. Okay, so I did the outline for the opening in the trees. It looked like this so far because I have not yet filled it in. I've just done the outline. I haven't done this bit because I want to just do the top bit first and see how far I bring it down when I add like all of these details. This isn't going to stay completely because I feel like this line, these lines are quite boring. I will be adding details like as I go through and then I'll be working on this section. But that's the outline so far. The woodland wall took way longer to block out compared to the mountain wall, especially when it came to marking out and filling in all the spaces where the greenery and the trees would be. Once I started, I just kept adding more and more. So obviously this took a really long time.
However, this was the first moment in the painting process that I could really see my vision coming together. It felt amazing to finally get all those big details fully blocked in and refined. To create the creatures that would inhabit my mountains and magical wood, I began by roughly sketching out the outlines of my chosen animals. I knew from when I first started imagining this mural that I wanted to feature a deer in the opening of the trees drinking from the lake, so that's where I started. After drawing the deer, I started to get a more clear and confident vision of what I wanted the scene to look like, so choosing which animals to include became a lot easier, including this little rabbit. Once sketched out, I cut out all my creatures and turned them into stencils like these. Then, with my stencils, I worked out the right positioning for each animal before carefully drawing around the outer edge to create an outline that would work as my borders before going in with the paint to fill the space. I started with my deer, which was by far my trickiest animal to paint. All the details like the antlers and the unusual head shape meant that I had to spend way longer perfecting all the edges before moving on. With the more delicate creatures, like these butterflies, it was actually much easier in the end to paint them freehand instead of using a stencil. This was a big test for my painting skills, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. The final step to completing my mural was adding the floral frame. I started out as I did with my mural creatures by creating a stencil and then drawing around the edges to create a border before painting. Being the closest layer to the viewer in perspective, I made this layer the darkest, using the same charcoal black as one of the mountain layers. So even though both walls are quite different in terms of scenery, I wanted to make sure that they both tied together with the colour palette. The frame took a very long time to complete and was a lot more tedious compared to the other steps in the mural process. In the end though, I was more than happy with how it turned out. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there for the actual process. I'm going to add a few more details to it, maybe a few more animals and stuff like that. It's coming along okay, I'm quite happy with it, but yeah, I'm going to do a few more bits to it off camera and then we'll be back for the reveal. Oh.
done. I really hope you enjoyed watching. I loved making the mural. Don't get me wrong, at times it was a bit tedious and there were elements of it that took longer. Getting all the base colours down and sort of figuring out where I wanted things. It was very much a work in progress. I didn't have the plan of including as many animals as I did when I first started out. It was very much adding as I went, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I think I'm going to add a few more little animals. I plan to add like a fox on the right hand side with the tree and the bush and everything. Just maybe his head peeking out from behind the tree I think would be really cute. Again, credit to Rachel Maxey for being the inspiration behind this video and also the lovely lady on TikTok. But yes, thank you so much for watching. I hope this inspires you to do your own warm mural. You know, if you're allowed, not on anyone's, you know, in your own room. But yeah. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.